Okay, so this uh, figure, yeah, this is a, a, a group in subphylum cephalochordata. They're called lancelets. They're the precursors to fish. Um, fish are believed to have evolved from this group, but fish are vertebrates. They have a backbone. This does still does not have a vertebral column. It is an invertebrate still. Um, and this is the closest drawing to it. This is what the actual animals look like when they're filter feeding. They're, they're filter feeders, and the tail end is down in the substrate, and the mouth end uh, is just sticking above the substrate like that. And then they filter the water through it. Um, and then we have several cross sections through here. So the mouth is at this end, the anus is at this end, and this would be the tail. So uh, we have, let's see, the, uh, this is known as the buccal cavity. Tentacles are surrounding these little tentacles that you stick out here are the buccal cavity with tentacles, and that's labeled right here in the front. Uh, then this large brown structure here with all the gill slits that you see is known as the pharynx, and gill slits are located in the pharynx. Lining those little gill slits are thousands of little cilia that are beating and creating a water current. And the beating of those cilia, cilia pulls water in from the mouth, uh, into the mouth, and then it goes inside the pharynx, and then it goes out through these openings, these little gill openings, that enter into a, uh, a body cavity here called the uh, atrium. It's not a coelom at this point, it's just an opening here that exits, that all that water, after it's been filtered, what happens is the water that comes in is bringing with it food plankton, things like that. And then the water goes into the pharynx, and then as it tries to go out through the hole, it's the inner part of the pharynx is lined with mucus, and it's like snot, essentially. And the water goes through that mucus, and anything that was in the water, like diatoms, dinoflagellates, bits of organic matter, gets stuck in the mucus on the inside of the pharynx here. It gets rolled up into a ball, which enters into the stomach, and eventually goes through the intestine, and whatever is not digested in the intestine comes out as waste at the anus here at the posterior end. Now the water that came in with food and then as it comes out through the mucus on the inside of the pharynx and it enters into this atrium, this body cavity here, that opens through a little hole anterior to the anus. The anus is back here in the tail. This one is like maybe two-thirds of the way back. It's called the atriopore. And that's where the water exits. So what exits down here is clean water after all the food has been extracted. So you got water with food coming in. The food gets piles up on the mucus inside the pharynx. The clean water goes through the gill slits and out the atriopore. Um, and uh, then the food gets wound up in the mucus and goes into the stomach. And digestion occurs. And then it goes into the intestine and so on. Um, all right, as far as this is a chordate, it is in the phylum chordata, so it has a dorsal hollow nerve cord, which is what that white structure is, just like uh, vertebrates have. It just doesn't have the vertebral column surrounding it to protect the nerve cord. So we have a dorsal nerve cord, and then we have underneath it the nodo cord. So we have dorsal nerve cord and nodo cord blue dorsal ner uh, nerve cord on your uh, diagram, and it's white on this one. Uh, the nodo cord is red on your diagram, and it's this yellow color that you see here. It's kind of like the precursor to the vertebral column, gives it some kind of support. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the stuff that's labeled here is what we're looking at. So that's all I expect you to, uh, to know about that. Let me go over it again. Mouth, 